So thank you to Shara and everyone who has helped work on this, uh, this one pager. This is the first draft of it. And we're finally producing something for all these conversations that we've been having about mandated reporting. So if we could just like go through this and um, see if there's anything that we can add, anything that you all think that we should take away, give us your overall um, view of this, that would be great. Okay. Do people, um, whoever your recorder was, want to share uh, room one, which had Demetra, Heather, Josie, Luke, Miana, and Raquel? I guess that's me. Um, yeah, so we spent some time just talking about um, the definition of neglect, because I know that was still like a sticking point. And um, we looked at the resource Sarah had provided, and then we looked at some definitions that Raquel provided, and we thought that like safety and harm seems like the most important thing to emphasize. So we came up with a uh, failure to provide adequate essentials of life to such a degree that causes harm to the child. Um, we feel like that like sums up in a way that really shows what the difference is between neglect and poverty. Um, so that was our suggestion there. Um, and then we also just suggested providing a link to resources in question three. Um, Can I changing... stop you for one second? Oh, Demetra, yeah. Because my attorney brain is on right now. So do folks know, is there a degree, does the law spell out or as uh, you know, calls are made to the child line, is intentionality a requirement? So for example, is it intentional failure to provide adequate essentials? Is that a requirement? I don't think so, right? Like it's it's like it's more of just a egregious failure, right? I don't think that it's like direct to say it's intentional or not, because a lot of the time, I mean, I think that's up for the investigation to figure out if it was if like the family is pur purposely not providing this or not able to provide it, which again goes back to poverty if they're not able to provide it or if they're not able to provide it because they're lifestyle or some sort. Okay, that's helpful. I just wanna know how to frame it. Eunice, were you gonna say something? Yeah, I was just gonna say, <clears throat> if we go into intent, that's gonna be a little too much. Okay. Um, yeah, so I don't think we should have that in there with the intent. Okay. Yeah, I think yeah. it's up to the investigation to find yeah, out the intent. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. thank y'all. I'm sorry, Demetria, to cut you off. I just, that came to mind. No, I think that's like, I think that's a good question because like, I think that's mm -hmm. where people, people do get like, go in circles about that. I think like the most important thing is like, is there actual harm happening or is it just like, the kid smells like cat pee, um, not just, but you know. Um, and then the only other thing we did was changed, uh, at Luke's suggestion, changed Asians to Asian people. Um, and that's, I think that was it for our group, unless anyone else had something. I added one thing as we were getting off. Um, we're say research has shown that even a brief interaction. Like I saw that in the footnotes, we quoted some things. Do we wanna like put um, a citation there for what research or like, so we could guide the reader to something? Yeah, I was thinking um, Raquel about Alan Detlef's research, but mm -hmm. I don't know if there's anything yes, definitely. more than that, but you think, okay. Yep, definitely. Thank you. All right, thank you. And thank you, many, many, many thanks to Luke as well for making that correction because that's super important. Okay, uh, group two. All right, um, we started off on paragraph two. Um, we seem to have an issue with the word interrogate. Um, and we thought maybe it would be examined might be better. We talked a little bit about that. We didn't want it to be so strong, but we also didn't want it to be weak. Um, and then this cause lifelong challenges, we said we either need to 
explain that a little bit more? Or and I don't know if that's what you're talking about, Raquel, about putting in something there. We need to explain that piece a little bit more if we are going to put that this causes lifelong challenges. I don't know. Um, um, in the next paragraph, we talked about putting the Harvard implicit bias test link in there. That would probably be good for people. Um, we kind of got nitpicky about words, correct resources. Um, so we said we wanted to say like appropriate resources um, for the family's needs. Um, I think you guys said this as well. Um, but where it says lives and such concerns are not pre present, I think it needs to be stronger about safety or harm. I guess we were talking about harm there because um, um, felt that needed to be a little bit stronger. Um, uh, give me an example there, Betsy, like how, how as far as safe, weaving safety into that sentence. So, um, so the agency should not interfere in families' daily lives if safety concerns are not present. We really are trying to get away from all the dumb calls. So we just put that as number six, stop doing dumb calls. Um, number one, I, I don't think we had anything in this second one, did we, people? No, I don't think so. Because they already had filled in, we were saying define it, and they already, Demetria had already done that. Okay. And then I think we skipped three, um, but we went to four and really wanted to talk about like, so you're supposed to check your implicit bias and then what? So we were talking a little bit about how to, how do we challenge our belief with facts? So just maybe like, um, like, okay, so you checked yourself, now what do you do? Like, um, and I think Aaron was talking about framing it with curiosity about what this means if you do find it. Um, I don't know what that would look like, but if that makes sense. Um, yeah, no, that's good. And I can also go back to the um, Kerwin Institute's work because they do have some examples of what you can do about bias. So that's yeah. good. Yeah, we just didn't want them to like high five themselves for getting implicit bias and then just go on. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and I think then we got pull back. Okay. Thank you all so much. That's incredibly, incredibly helpful. Um, so we'll do another round of edits. There's a subgroup of us who've been working on this. And um, I'll just ask that that group give the final version a green light. And then we are going to send it over to um, the graphic designer to do some edits to make it pretty in the BGA. Um, kind of style guide and we will have our first product of the work group first finished product so good job everybody good job i'll turn it over to you raquel i was just saying yes in celebration of having <laughs> something because we've been talking about this forever <laughs> but i'm and that makes me think okay so now they have this in their hands what is our next step And I, I know that we were emailing back and forth. Um, do we do a train a trainer like that training that um, Tawanda delivered to Gwen's girl staff and begin to pick some of us out of this group or CYF to train others around it um, as a follow-up to this? I don't know. Where do you all think? Where are your... That's what I was thinking. The next thing is they get this in their hands and then we provide training. And I know in the last one, we talked about Kanika and someone else partnering up and going mm -hmm. and really going over this with them along with the training. The more I think it's a good idea because uh, like like um, the document has, it's, it's a very, um, it's a kind of an automatic thing that we have these biases but how to minimize, because 
there's biases about there's there's all kinds of ways that we look at bias it's not always race and all of that but there's just certain things that we might be overreacting to or underreacting to that Tawanda's training helps to mitigate that because there were things that although I'm a, been a mandated as a former teacher and all that there were things that I just didn't uh, realize that I was thinking about or would be thinking I should report on that I really shouldn't be reporting on because of perceptions um, or thinking that it's a problem that somebody is poor versus, but they're not deprived. So that wouldn't be a reason to report somebody because of, a, of an economic issue that I might notice about a kid or something. Her, her, she did an excellent job. We just went through a revamp of it again recently. And I think I would highly recommend because it, it helped cut cross, across, uh, you know, socioeconomic matters. She gets into a lot of that stuff through her examples. So yeah, that's the training that I was yep. talking about, Dr. Cozy. Yep. Cause, yep. Um, and I don't know if it would be, um, Tawanda during the training or her training, some people um, from different agencies that make up this um, group. If it's something that we do at the equity, at the, um, the Dorn conference call, that's, a, that's August 17th and 18th, that one. <laughs> I can't think of the conference today. But Gwen's Girls Conference, like, is it an opportunity to get yeah, people the in? for training during that. Um, so what would it look like for us? That is such a good idea. Done. Yeah. <laughs> Done. We're working on the agenda. Yeah. Now. I think yeah. that's excellent. And Tashara, you know, I'll back you in whatever it is you got going on with that. So good idea. Something coming out of this group that gets brought to that would be awesome. It's just a matter of what Tawanda, how she, you know, rolls with mm -hmm. this, but yeah. The training that- How long was the training? It was about three hours. It's three hours. It was 11, so do, like 11 to two. So do you all think that that's something that would be offered that day? Or would it be like a start off, like with that training on like the 16th or something? Or because it's two, is it, is it two days? It's two days. Right. But, but the way she did the training, she split it up into two areas. So perhaps depending on how she wants to facilitate and how this group comes up with, you know, availability, she might be able to break it up into two days, you know, do an hour and a half, you know, one day and then come back and do the second part maybe do one virtual one live I you know I don't know um but those are things to explore you know because there were two just... two parts where she could break it up and I would say yeah I'm a little ignorant what exactly was the training that Tawanda did was this something that was on mandated reporting in reporters in general or what was the title right it was a mandated reporting uh refresher update um it was an update. Yep. Because, you know, all of us obviously had to have be mandated. We already had to be certified in that. So it was a refresher and update. And um, you all need refreshers because you just things come up that you don't think about. So, um, yeah. The sessions are usually um, 45 minutes. So I'm wondering if we reach out to Tawanda and ask if she can do something that's more of like an abbreviated version. And because so many people in the room, as you said, are going to be mandated reporters, it may be more about framing it like your mandated reporter now what? So like something about how you can include um, these five questions mm -hmm. into the work that you're already doing or the lens that you already have. Yeah. I think that's definitely something to explore with her. Like I said, there were parts that, you know, we had a 20 minute break twice or something like that. So that would, might, it might be that we could do two 45 minutes to your point. Or would this be something that happens in the, in the big room because everyone is going to be mandated reporters? Well, majority of us, there are mandated reporters. Mm-hmm. 
maybe something break out for the girls during that time and then break out for the mandated reporters. Yeah, and, and just so you all know that the topic this year is um, Empower the Children, which goes back to an African saying by the Maasai people. Mm-hmm. And so <clears throat> when I think about child well-being, I mean, this agency and mandated reporters are the literal ones who kind of are the, the um, that's what I'm looking for, y'all, like the front line of ensuring child safety and well-being. So I can see how that might also like Raquel, like you said, be something that would be great for the, uh, for a plenary discussion, not just a workshop. Um, But like I said, we're at the very beginning stages of developing the agenda. But what I can promise is that we will hold space for the conversation someplace for sure. And just so folks know, the dates are August 17th. Well, now 16th will be, that Wednesday will be the boat ride. 17th is gonna be the full day summit that we're accustomed to. And the 18th, that Friday is going to be like a youth rally event that's gonna be held outdoors. Okay, so we got the next steps. Like I said, um, we'll go through another round of edits and, we should talk about maybe for March's meeting, what the agenda might be. Betsy and Raquel, I'm thinking it may be helpful to kind of dig dig a bit deeper on next steps. Yeah. Okay. Um, And then we would ask you, Sarah, to help us there probably because as we've said before, so much of this is connected to caring connections and some of those um, connections, sorry to be redundant, that we already have. All right, I don't have anything else for the agenda, do you all? No. All right. So last thing before you go, let me just drop the link here for uh, the webinar tomorrow. And also let me say um, that the all BGEA meeting is going to be held in April. Um, Please, please, please plan to attend that meeting. Uh, We are going to be talking about what we've touched on in this work group, which is completely realigning the work groups. So post that meeting, there may actually not be another child welfare meeting. Um, All of the groups are being reassigned into topical areas. And there will be, of course, topics that touch on child welfare, but we're going to be very specific because our goal is to actually see traction in certain policy and practice areas and to organize ourselves that way. All right. Y'all have an amazing day. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye. Bye.